Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. There is a struggle facing EVs. There is a certain exponential tipping point, however, that when you get past said struggle, it becomes amazing. The struggle EVs have that I'm referring to is the batteries just weigh so much. And that the more the car weighs, well, then the more batteries you need. It's a bit of a vicious circle. Now, because this is so important with EVs, this is why we see Tesla doing such amazing jobs with drag coefficients, because it all makes a difference. You think the Cybertruck Volt is cool with the retractable roof? Well, that's for aerodynamics too. If you have an open bed in a pickup truck, then it acts as a sail, slowing the car down. There's a reason the Cybertruck looks how it does, because the future is electric. And this is what electric cars look like. Why do they look like this? Because of drag coefficient. You can try and make an electric pickup truck look like an internal combustion one, but there's a big reason the Cybertruck looks that much different. Pickup trucks are big and heavy. If it's not aerodynamic, then its range will suffer. But to fix that, you can add more batteries. But then the weight has increased, so you need to add some more batteries again. In the end, you're stuck with these heavy cars that don't have much range, except they still have large batteries, which is a very high cost. But a pickup truck is big. At least you can fit a lot of batteries in there. But it makes it cost a lot, which is why Ford are likely going to lose money on most of their F-150 Lightning sales. But I don't think they can make them fast enough to meet demand anyway, at least for the low cost models. But what have Tesla done with their weight saving techniques? Tesla realized the key is to get the weight of the car as light as possible due to these heavy battery packs. Tesla do what they can at the battery level to save weight, but it doesn't stop there. Making structural battery packs and die cast molds for the cars and many other ways of saving weight as much as possible, it all adds up. Of course, there have been massive weight savings with the 4680 batteries. Considering the battery makes up about one third of the weight of the car, it makes more than sense to do whatever is possible to reduce weight here. We look forward to seeing just how much weight saving we will see from the 4680 batteries. I think the best indication will be to compare the Fremont Model Y specs with the Berlin or Texas Model Ys. Compare the weight and the kilowatt hours of the vehicles. This will be very interesting. As Tesla transitions into the next expansion of operation, they're not going to be able to do it all without giving away some secrets, like just how good these 4680 batteries are. Of course, who knows, they may even suppress some of the range with software, perhaps they don't want the competition to know just how much further ahead they are, or anyone for that matter. Anyway, it's possible Tesla may only need a 70 kilowatt hour 4680 battery to get as much out of the 82 kilowatt hour 2170 battery. Whoa, no way, does that sound believable? Surely not. Well, if the new Model S long range is getting about the same range out of a battery 10 to 20 kilowatt hours less, then surely the new Model Y could too. Remember, we're also talking front and rear die casting and structural battery pack, along with 4680 batteries. But the virtuous circle part of the technology only gets exponentially better here. You see, we're at a point now where if Tesla can find more ways to save weight, then they're also able to remove some batteries, as few are required to get the same specifications as previously, due to weight saving. The more Tesla's weight is saved with technology and advances, it has potentially increased 25% again by fewer batteries being required too. Tesla have already reached ranges that are a sufficient level, with charging networks to back them up and support long distance traveling. Perhaps not everywhere yet, but sufficient enough for a lot of consumers. And as more consumers adopt Teslas as their car, then the charging networks and service centers will also continue to grow, making the product better and better. Of course, as batteries are the largest cost in an EV, if you're having to use fewer batteries, then that is also a huge cost saving. Well, Tesla have their 4680 batteries costing nearly half as much as presumably the 2170 batteries. But if on top of that, they required maybe 15 to 20% fewer batteries too, then that all goes to net profit. Put it this way, and okay, potential supply chain issues aside, or even inflation, in real terms, this is the most expensive Tesla's cars will 
cost to make. As in, it's likely to only get better from here on in, as they find more ways to cut costs and increase margins. Tesla are not going to pass the saving on to the consumer, at least not anytime soon. There is simply no need. It looks like they will try and match supply and demand at the clearing price as much as they can. The supply should be eased somewhat as the new factories come online and start to ramp up next year. Therefore, any cuts in costs Tesla create will simply go to net profit. For example, if Tesla's new motor was also lower cost than their previous motor, and eventually they included these new motors in all their vehicles, perhaps they save $250 per motor with the new design, which is a huge additional profit to make. But what if the new motors also reduced the weight of a dual motor Tesla by about 70 pounds? Well, that would mean perhaps the car now needs $100 less batteries now too. This isn't the same as an internal combustion engine. If you want more range, then you just make a bigger gas tank. But whenever you save weight from an ICE car, you can't simply remove a fraction of the engine like you can the battery pack, as it's no longer required for the same specifications. This is what all of Tesla's technology is like at this stage. Even any small improvement has such an impact now, especially now with the new 4680 batteries, which will be much lighter per kilowatt hour. And Tesla think there is still reasonable improvement on these batteries over the next few years still, which will make a big difference. Although the batteries weigh a lot, it's great that all the battery weight is at the bottom of the car though. It gives the car a lower center of gravity, so it handles better. This is why some sports cars have carbon fiber roofs. Carbon fiber weighs much less, and thus the roof is the best place to incorporate that, as to keep the weight lower to the ground. Of course, Tesla have also talked about moment of inertia, which means if there are fewer batteries required, then it will be the batteries from the outside of the pack that will be removed, keeping the weight towards the center of the car. This would dramatically improve handling and cornering, along with weight distribution. This is why a lot of sports cars are mid-engined, which usually looks like the engine is in the back. This will also make Teslas continually safer due to the batteries being closer to the center, meaning in an incident, they are further from any potential impact and thus less likelihood of fire. Due to being so much lighter, Tesla's cars will handle that much better. They'll be able to accelerate quicker, have a faster top speed, more range, faster stopping, better cornering. This is just physics, a subject Elon knows well. Physics is the law, everything else is a recommendation, as Elon said. As time goes on and the technologies improve, there will be fewer and lighter batteries required in a Tesla. Tesla will continue to require less batteries and make lighter cars. You see, simply the better and better you get the weight, then the better the car performs and handles, not to mention how much more range you can get, or less batteries required to get about the same, and just more profit to Tesla. When there are charging stations everywhere and charging speed is faster, then larger, heavier batteries are probably also less necessary for the majority of people. There is no competition coming anytime soon. If Tesla always has the demand, they can just add any cost savings to their profits rather than reduce the price for the consumers. But all these improvements now are just so exponential. I mean, the 4680s and all associated features have amazing weight savings that from here on in, any small change has a big impact. It will be very interesting to see how many kilowatt hours the Model 2 will require, although it will likely be using LFP which is a bit heavier, but with its short wheelbase, I can't wait to see how it handles. Meanwhile, the competition are having to find ways of adding more batteries and weight to try and reach Tesla specifications. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.